CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on April 24th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agenda and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connect connection to the meeting. There will be the following opportunities for public, um, for public comment at tonight's meeting. We, we have warrant article hearings for the special town meeting. When we get to that, I will uh, let, the, let the public know uh, when that opportunity arises. If you're attending by Zoom and want to participate, please raise your hand when I announce the public comment is open. If you do not know how to raise your hand in Zoom, as the predecessor had reminded people, now would be an excellent time to learn uh, in, in, in Google, uh, to Google it uh, for an explanation of how to do it. We have 11 items on the agenda tonight. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done. Um, I will now move to the consent agenda. It's seven items two through seven. Item two, minute, minutes of meetings, March 18th, 2024, March 26th, 2024, April 1, 2024. Item three, request for a contract to drain layer license, Joseph de Premio, uh, Premio paving and seal coating. Item four, request for a special one day beer and wine license on April 27th for the Fidelity House. Item five, a request for a special one day beer and wine license on April 27th at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, Christine Bongiorno, Deputy Town Manager. Item six, Art in the Park, July 27th, 2024 at Whittemore Park. Item seven, Art on the Green Town Day, September 21, 2024 at Whittemore Park. I'll turn to members. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, move approval, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Diggins. Second. Any questions, comments? Okay, on a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Consent agenda is passed. Um, and I should point out, I didn't say it at the beginning, I don't believe Mr. Hurd is going to be with us at the meeting. He may join us late. Um, he's going to be down at town meeting. Um, Next is item eight, traffic rules and orders, other business, discussion and approval, Lachlan Avenue loading zone. Um, Mr. Feeney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the board's consideration this evening is the institution of a commercial loading zone on the west side of Lachlan Ave at the intersection with Mass Ave. Uh, in your meeting materials, you uh, received a memorandum from John Alessi, our senior transportation planner, outlining the genesis of this request, which was from the uh, developer of the 882 through 892 Mass Ave parcel, uh, which was recently occupied. So <clears throat> this request has been uh, reviewed by town staff on a number of occasions, including folks from engineering, uh, the police department, the fire department, planning staff, as well as myself. And after a number of rounds of revisions, we thought that the proposed design and request from the developer, which would be uh, instituted at the developer's cost, including all uh, pavement markings in the public right-of-way, 
should the board uh, look favorably upon this request. So uh, ultimately what this amounts to is designating a commercial loading zone with 30 minute parking on a short stretch that has long been uh, largely a no parking area and still would be a short no parking area nearest the intersection, but uh, whereas the new development has shifted the driveway further away from Mass Ave, it provides enough space to have a sufficient loading zone to support uh, the commercial nature of that mixed use building, as well as the commercial buildings uh, surrounding the neighborhood and keeping those uh, commercial trucks out of hopefully you know passenger vehicle spots. So we thought that uh, this would not present any risks uh, to public safety, but would actually provide a benefit not just to the occupants of the building requesting it, but to uh, surrounding uh, buildings as well that may benefit from a commercial loading zone. So the ask of the board this evening, if you agree, is to approve the institution of this commercial loading zone, as well as the outlined roadway improvements, but also to amend what we know as Schedule 1 parking of the Town of Arlington's traffic rules and orders, uh, so that the no parking on the west side, the no parking regulation on the west side of Lockland Ave in these amendments has been adjusted to encompass the length now between Mass Ave and the proposed loading zone. Thank you. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. Um, any questions, motions from board? Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to the town manager, if I may. Um, I noticed that the, the, the illustration we have is for the loading zone with violators will be towed. Um, just two questions. Does that leave the town and the, the police the option to do ticketing instead in, in some discretion there? How does that work? Mr. Fee. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Indeed, that discretion would remain. And as you may know, towing tends to be the town's last resort. Yeah, yeah that was going to be my second question, is what are typical policies. Do you still, are you still comfortable with having the, the towing sign, you know, rather than violators will be ticketed, and having that provision available? I believe so. I think it provides for the maximum amount of flexibility and enforcement. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to move approval. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan? Um, <clears throat> I will second it and just ask the chair or town council, can we do it all in one motion or should it be two separate? Uh, Attorney Cunningham? Uh, thank you. Michael Cunningham, town council, yes, it could be one motion. Thank you. Great. Any other questions, comments from board? Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. So on a motion for approval uh, from Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's a unanimous vote. Okay. Uh, next item is item nine, warrant article hearings. Uh, tonight, the articles of review for review, uh, we have article two and article five. Um, this is for the special town meeting warrant. There are a total of five warrant articles on the special town meeting. Um, one is a report of committees, doesn't require any action by the select board. Articles two, four, and five are select board warrant articles for recommendation to the town meeting. The special town meeting is gonna take place on May 6th. So all of the request in here is for action to take place at town meeting beginning on May 6th. Um, I will note we originally were gonna have article four on for hearing this evening. There is an issue that has come up. That hearing is going to be put off, I believe, until next week, uh, either Monday or Wednesday, on, on that, and, and we will post a meeting on that. Article 3 is a zoning bylaw. That will be before the redevelopment board. Um, and, and again, just for the public's benefit, special town meeting warrant articles um, that are submitted by residents, it's 100 signatures in addition to the proponent. And, and that's what we have here, what we will have when we get to Article 5, 100 registered voters and, and a proponent. Um, so I will start with Article 2. I do want to point out that tonight is the first night of town meeting, so we have a limited amount of time this evening for public comments. I don't want to take all of it describing what the, 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 the protocol is here. Um, and and um, so as a result, we've put 30 minutes on this. We have a number of people who are here. 
The proponents will get up to seven minutes. After that, it's three minutes per speaker. Um, and we'll just try to get through as much as we can. Mr. Feeney? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to note that the special town meeting will be on May 8th. Oh, May 8th. Okay, I'm record. sorry. I had yep. say, thank you very much. So May 8th um, for the special. I had it two days early. Okay, so Article 2, bylaw amendment, amend the Poet Laureate Screening Committee membership. This is inserted at the request of the Poet Laureate Screening Committee. Is there anybody here to present that? Uh, come right up. Yeah. I am Lydia Kinnick Sher, and I am a commissioner in the Arlington Commissioner Arts and Culture, which is the funding mechanism for the Port Laureate, and I'm acting as an interim uh, uh, chair of the commission. Uh, our petition essentially entails to change one of the members in the screening committee, and uh, uh, originally was a, a member for elected from a town meeting, town manager, and we selected as a commission that we'd like to put forth to have the former Port Laureate to be represented. We feel that based on our uh, uh, looking at what was going on, having a Port Laureate in the screening committee helps us attract other Port Laureates at time of electing Port Laureate. So in any case, as you will see in the petition, we the town, town manager will still have a say on it. And in, in fact, in case of this no poet laureate, which I hope it never happens, that the town manager would appoint someone from uh, to the town meeting. Okay, great. That's all. Great, thank you very much. And, and I note that the town, the town, uh, the poet laureate committee in Arlington is in, I believe it's Article 11 of Title II, and that's why we, it's required to have a change. So. I will turn to board members with any questions or comments, and we also open it up for, for public comments as well. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm glad, glad you made it, and sorry I got my response too late, you know, so, so thanks for being here. I, since I've worked with Ms. Um, Mr. Chair, I mean, I, I pretty much know I mean, what's going on with this article, so I don't have any questions. Sure, okay, thank you. And are there any members of the public who wish to be heard on this Warren article? And, and no one on Zoom, Mr. Mellon, okay. All right, I will return to board members for motions, comments. Mr. Helmuth? I'd be very happy to move favorable action. Um, it's one of my favorite um, parts of our arts and cultural scene, and it's been a real addition to the town, and I think this is a really sensible uh, proposal to ensure some continuity. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. I'll second it. Thank you. Thank you. I, think, I don't know if I said approval, but I meant favorable action. Okay, thank you. And of course, this goes to town meeting. We're just issuing advice. Right. Great. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you for this suggestion. It does make sense uh, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, having the previous Poet Laureate. Um, helps us network uh, a little bit more, I think, uh, as well as if they ask, if I was on a screening committee and they asked a real in-depth question and I couldn't answer it, you have the Poet Laureate. So, um, And I, I'm really grateful that we have this position. When I was a young kid growing up, Miriam Levine was her son and my brother were best friends, and she really got us into the love of learning through reading and poems. And um, so thank you, and thank you to the committee for continuing on with this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. I'm also happy to support favorable action, and thank you for coming this evening. So on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins for favorable action. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed. No Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is Article 5, Resolution for a Ceasefire Proclamation, uh, inserted at the request of Shadi Salomon and 100 registered voters. Is Mr. Salomon here this evening? Can be joined by two other And before you begin, just as a reminder, so the initial presentation, you will have up to seven minutes after that speaker's up to three minutes. Thank you. Does this work? Okay. Yeah, and, and, and that's for the benefit of, of, of cable as much as anything. That's for amplification. Uh, I, I want to apologize in advance. I'm 
somewhat losing my voice, so I hope everyone can hear me. Hello, my name is David Flagg. I have been a resident of Arlington for 14 years. I sit here today in support of Arlington passing a ceasefire resolution. It is my hope that the select board will represent the majority of Arlington citizens who want the release of all the hostages, an end to the killing, and a diplomatic solution to the conflict based on international law. Here in Arlington, I have seen the movement for peace grow from a handful of people to hundreds. While I am hopeful that the select board will stand for the moral character of our town and the value of liberty and justice for all, I am also aware that there is a chance you will choose not to. I am Jewish. My family came to America fleeing the pogroms. I was the president of the Hillel chapter at my college. I majored in comparative religion, focusing on the similarities between Jewish philosophy and Confucianism. I teach my children to argue with me. I believe in the Ten Commandments, a few of which I would like to highlight here. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is heaven above, or that is on the earth below, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not murder. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, and you shall not cover your neighbor's house or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I am neither more or less Jewish than anyone here. No person can speak for every member of the Jewish community. We are a diverse group, liberal, conservative, socialist, capitalist, rich, poor, atheist, and religious. There is nothing that supports anti-Semitism more than the idea that all Jews are the same or are of one mind. Every rally that I have been to, I have been there with other Jews. In Arlington, we have members of Jewish Voices for Peace, if not now, and Arlington for Palestine. During the listening sessions hosted by the AHRC, roughly one third of the people speaking in support were Jewish, including several Israeli Jews. Recently, the Progressive Israel Network, which represents J Street, the New York Jewish Addenda, Partners for Progressive Israel, and many other groups, issued a letter to President Biden calling for a ceasefire, part of which I will quote now. We firmly believe that there is no military solution to this conflict. The only future for Israelis and Palestinians is a shared future, and we must raise up, not shut down, our shared humanity in this moment. There are certainly Jewish people in our community who believe that the killing should continue. I cannot deny that they exist. There are also Jewish people in our community, and I am one of them, who believe that human rights are universal, that the lives of Palestinians are of equal value to those of anyone else, and that what we are witnessing in Gaza must stop. No one can deny that we also exist. We are real, our voices matter, and we should not be silenced. If the select board opts not to endorse the Warren article, I hope that one thing will be clear. That decision should not be blamed on the Jewish community. Do not lay that burden at our feet, for we will not carry it for you. That failure, that legacy, would be yours and yours alone. To the question of whether this conflict is relevant to our community, the answer can only be yes. Our tax money goes both to fund the weapons and the humanitarian relief. Our soldiers die and will die in greater numbers if it continues. Our family members are killed or are at risk in this war. Our values and the values that we pass on to our children are reflected by the actions that we take in respect to what is happening. If we cannot take a stand on this conflict, tell me, where is the border that our humanity ends at? Can we talk about Lexington? 
Massachusetts, New England, our country? Would we say that we can't take a stand on slavery because it happened in the South? Do we tell the Native Americans we can't talk about what happened to them? Would we stand silent during the Holocaust? Where do we tell our children that our values end? <clears throat> I know that for me, my family, and the community I know and love in Arlington, we recognize the value of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all. And I hope the select board will do the same. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Chadi Salamoon of Ernest Road. I come here tonight and ask for your support for a very challenging time for our community. I was born in Beirut, Lebanon in 1983 into a war. I came here at the age of six to escape that war. And I had already experienced things that no child ever should. My family and I escaped with our lives on multiple occasions, including when a bomb was planted on our balcony, ripped through our neighborhood. We fled. Our next house was riddled with bombs, excuse me, with bullets, while we hid in a chicken coop down the street. That chicken coop was infested with rats. Members of the select board, I know I'm one of the lucky ones. I got out. I did not see my brother, or my sister's body parts splattered all over the wall, ripped to shreds by bombs. I did not lose a limb, and I was not orphaned. So I am here to speak for all the children who cannot currently escape their situation, as I was able to do. I am also here to speak as an impacted member of the Arlington community. My father was a hostage during the war, kidnapped by very young men. It was only by the grace and empathy of another father on an opposite side in the war, another father who understood what it would have meant to us, his children, if my father was killed, that he was freed. This experience and our experience here in America has taught us to be afraid and to be silent. My family doesn't know that I'm here tonight. They'd be petrified. My name is on the warrant article, and I know that I'm exposing myself, and I'm also exposing them to a danger. And the longer this violence goes on, the more exposed we all will be. Throughout my childhood here, and throughout the last six months, I've been called a terrorist. I've been called a sand N-word. In eighth grade, I was physically assaulted at a park because I'm Arab. In February of this year, I recorded a parent threatening us with physical violence. I reported it to the mayor, who is my employer, and to the superintendent on which the school property had occurred. But no one spoke up to condemn this hate. On April 8th, this parent returned and threatened my family with sexual assault. I recorded it. It's the silence of good people and the silence of our leaders that hurts the most, not this guy threatening me. It's the silence that gives this guy the ability to do what he does. I heard so many Arab, Jewish, and Muslim residents speak to the same pain and fear during the Human Rights Commission listening sessions. Why do we speak when one group's rights are denied or violated but remain silent while another group's rights are denied? This part is particularly hard for me. Being a member of a group that your country and community dehumanize or ignore, particularly in their darkest hour. This happens to Jews, this happens to Muslims, this happens to me, a Christian-born Lebanese American who lives in Arlington. I know I'm not alone in advocating for a ceasefire. 70% of all Americans across the political spectrum want a ceasefire, 
including 80% of Democrats. I needed 100 signatures to get this ceasefire resolution on the special town meeting warrant, and I spent my birthday collecting signatures, and collectively, we garnered nearly 300 signatures in one day. I met people all over Arlington, people who aren't Arab or Muslim, who are deeply concerned that our tax dollars continue to contribute to the ongoing violence. People are afraid for their safety, and they're afraid what a regional war would mean for America. Members of the select board, this article does not ask you to condemn anyone or to choose a side. It asks you to recommit to our values that center humanity. It's a starting point where Arlington can help all impacted members of the community begin to heal. Throughout my life, one of my parents repeatedly told me to be careful and that I'm exposing us to danger. This week, this parent admittedly told me that they were proud of the work that I was doing and that it was time to break our silence. I'm asking all of us to break the silence together. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank. Thank. Thank you very much. So, what we typically do after the proponents speak, I, I open it up to board members for any questions. I then open it up for public hearing. Before we get to the public hearing, we had received a listening session report from the Arlington Human Rights Commission. I was told before the meeting this evening that they had a meeting. So, after questions from board members, I am going to ask the co-chairs from the Human Rights Commission to address the board, and then we will. Uh, I'll open it up. Um, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much uh, for your very thoughtful um, and heartfelt comments. Um, I just want to suggest something to my colleagues. We have a big turnout tonight, and we have a time limit that's beyond our control. Um, I'm also aware that there are members of the community who were not able to participate tonight because of um, the way that they observe the Jewish holiday right now that that's ending tonight. Uh, but they were not able to prepare and preserve uh, to participate. And uh, I think more than that, this is important enough that it deserves the fullest hearing that we can give. So uh, something for my colleagues to consider when we conclude uh, the time that the chair has set tonight is that we could vote to continue the hearing um, to our next meeting and maybe set an additional meeting to, to allow more time uh, for more people to contribute. So that would be something that I would be interested in, particularly given that uh, things are moving very quickly. I know that we're going to hear from the Human Rights Commission uh, chairs shortly, and but that's something that just happened this evening. And, you know, for me, at least more time would be more listening, and I think that might be a helpful thing. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Any other comments from board members? Um, and, and I will note, just for the public, we received a number of comments, written comments from people. What we did is all comments received through noon today is posted on the agenda. We received a number after noon. They will be posted after the meeting, but we just had to cut it off just for preparation purposes for, the, for this evening. And, and, and thank you, Ms. Almuth. I did note that there was a number of things that did come in later today. And as I said, I just want to stress that again, this resolution is to go before town meeting on May 8th. So it's not action tonight. So, so you're... Um, comment on, on, on time is, is uh, I appreciate that. So with that, um, if I could call the mem the co-chairs of the Arlington Human Rights Commission up, um, and they, they had, there is a listening session report that is part of our agenda. I believe they may have an update um, following their meeting today. Right, thank you. Just a timer for my own uh, reference here. Um, okay, uh, thank you for, for having us here. Uh, the authors of Article 5 first asked the HRC to make a ceasefire proclamation back in March. Um, we, we heard a lot from them but decided to hold listening sessions to hear from a broader range of community perspectives. You have our report, it comprises um, the feedback from uh, a very brave hundred or approximately hundred people who spoke on camera and um, over a hundred emails written submissions um, and we can, we're happy to answer any questions about that. Um, the authors of Article 5 subsequently wrote their own proclamation uh, which we just reviewed in a special meeting right before this meeting 
um, and the AHRC has voted to endorse the article. Um, because we, re we observed two very important things from the listening sessions. The first was that the most damaging and divisive mindset is a binary sort of zero-sum perspective where any action is considered a win for one side and a loss for the other, or vice versa. And that's not true, and it, um, it creates this box, and in that mindset, everyone loses. Uh, the other thing, though, we heard is that almost everyone affected by this conflict has personal or close to personal experience of guilt by association, Muslims being called terrorists, Jewish people being held responsible for the actions of the Israeli government, um, all unfair, and they're afraid of this happening again. So we hope that you will agree that we need to fight this perception and not uh, sort of cater to it. Um, a vote for this proclamation is not a vote for Palestine or Israel, for Muslims or Jews. Um, it's not a vote to get involved or not involved. We're unfortunately past that point because silence sends a message too. Uh, it would be a vote for common humanity. It would be an expression of solidarity for everyone who cares about human rights and civilian welfare. Um, and it can serve as a positive step toward acknowledging the common ground we have in this town that we can build on through further action. Uh, so the AHRC hopes you will support this article as we do. Thank you, Mr. Pusey. Mr. Jones, did you, I don't know if you had anything further to? Uh, I would just mention that along with, as you'll see in the report, this is part of a portfolio of actions that we're committed to taking through the Human Rights um, Commission, uh, including convening and co-sponsoring more opportunities for education, because if there is any question <coughs> of whether or not what is going on in Gaza is impacting um, here, it was clearly answered during the listening sessions where we hear not only the direct impact to families and, and people, but also um, how the binary uh, uh, zero-sum uh, uh, mindset that Drake has described has infiltrated our community and uh, needs um, education and action and more dialogue. Great. Thank you. Uh, any questions from board members for the members of the commission? Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for all the work that you've done along with the proponents um, of this Warren article in the special town meeting. Um, just want to put something out there to the commission um, through the chair and the town manager and Jillian Javier, diversity, equity, and inclusion um, director, if I say the position correctly. Um, just as this Warren article um, has been discussed, got signatures, listening sessions, etc., and mindful of the town and school um, sort of parallel course, but sometimes separate. Um, um, I had heard some stories uh, similar to the previous speaker, although when you said a superintendent and mayor, I'm guessing that wasn't in Arlington since we're a town and not a city, but I have heard. Um, I think three anecdotal, um, all from parents, um, uh, two middle school, one high school, anecdotal stories of their experience. And so uh, not necessarily looking for an answer to this question, um, unless there can be a, a brief answer, but uh, I guess the point question is, am I correct or not correct in terms of um, anecdotal stories that come to the attention of somebody who's on the select board, someone who are colleagues on the school committee, and or any town official. Um, is that something also that the Human Rights Commission, the DEI director, um, not only is hearing and gathering, but is also taking some proactive steps to educate? I'm not saying you know, you could take myself and my three siblings and we can all have something happen at Sunday dinner and we're all going to be right and we'll probably have four different stories. But the big thing is to get to what the root is. So um, is that something that the Human Rights Commission does? And if it's not, because I respect town and school, in terms of education and um, making sure that not only feels heard, if it takes it to the next level, that somebody doesn't feel safe and or, um, or is that something that's on the town side working with the schools through the DEI director? 
Uh, we can take a first crack at it. Uh, we absolutely encourage anyone who has experienced an incident or observed an incident like that to report it to us. We have a form on our website. We actually have two. We have a sort of initial easy form, and then if they want to do a formal complaint, there's a longer form. But we want to hear about all these things. We track incidents. We um, include the numbers in our annual reports. Um, and anti-Semitism is the most, is, what am I trying to say? There are more incidents reported of anti-Semitism than anything else right now. Briefly during the Trump administration and after um, the murder of George Floyd, uh, BLM related incidents rose to the number one spot, but anti-Semitism is back up to the number one spot. We work very well with APD, um, sort of cross-referencing incidents and complaints, um, and we are working constantly with the, with the school system to um, get the, the reporting of that more normalized across the different schools. And, and I think I would note within the constraints of uh, protection and privacy regulations for schools especially becomes complicated, but what's not complicated is offering a more prominent response and prevention uh, protocol for these incidents which um, uh, have been rising. So part of the portfolio that, um, uh, of offerings that we hope to take after the listening sessions is we're empowering a new special working group um, at the moment, we have schools and communications and, and some other ones that have just been um, part of our, our commission for a long time, but uh, engaging a new special working group specifically focused on uh, promoting religious tolerance, safety, and understanding. And we're also engaging with the, the schools um, for more prevention mechanisms and other ways that, say, PTOs can get more involved in, in supporting productive conversations. Um, including about uh, racial hatred and, and racist violence uh, going on in, in schools as well, which are also reported to us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, before you go, just one question. This is from your listening session. I don't know as a result of your vote tonight, will you be submitting a, re a report or a comment to town meeting for the um, for, for, for May 8th. I don't know if that came up in the discussion. Um, yeah, we will, our, our intention was first and foremost to post this on our website as soon as we can, um, but we would, we'll, we'll get some coaching by Jillian on what the proper mechanism is to make our vote clear to town meeting for okay. that special meeting. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right. Thanks. So with that, I will now open it up for public comment. And as I said, uh, three minutes uh, per person. And actually, with this, so one person stand up first. So. <clears throat> should we have a line or yeah, I actually, maybe we should have a line um, over here. And okay. sorry, it's just hard to. Can I sure. Oh, from board members, you mean, or? Because I, I tell me if I misunderstood you, but did you say that you would ask usually ask a question if you had any, and then but you wanted to hear from the HRC first, or was that something that you were interested? Yeah, no, no, just so it, what we have typically done during the Warren article hearings is there is initial round of questioning. After the public hearing portion, members are free to make comments or ask questions if they like. It's just two rounds. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. If you could introduce yourself for the record. Thank you. Yes, my name is David Emmer. I'd like to thank the select board for recognizing me. I am here in opposition to the proposed resolution for a ceasefire. I'd like to make three brief points. First, I firmly believe that there are people of good faith on both sides of this issue. Since October 7th, I have reached out to people with whom I vehemently disagree on the Israel-Hamas war. I encourage everyone in front of me and behind me to do so too. The challenges facing this town, hunger right here, the lack of affordable housing, inadequate teacher pay, among many others, are too great so that we must set aside our disagreements on this resolution. We must work together and live together peacefully. Along those lines, my second point is that we should focus on the local effects of October 7th and combating hate generally. Before October 7th, in May 2019, 
a man set fire to the Chabad house on Lake Street. That man attempted to burn children of our community alive. At my daughter's elementary school, Hardy Elementary School, there has been hate directed, not to my knowledge, at her, but at children who are Jewish and Muslim alike. I don't doubt the previous speakers and the proponents of this resolution who spoke of their, very poignantly and eloquently of their own experience of physical threats against them, Arabs, Jews, and Christians. As a community, we must work to confront these incidents to make Arlington a safe and welcoming place for all. Frankly, I don't think the Human Rights Commission taking a position on this contentious issue makes it likely that people are going, of all faiths, of all nationalities, of all ethnicities, are going to go before them and report when they know that what their policy position is on a contentious issue. Our focus should be on combating hate of all forms in Ma and right here in Massachusetts and of Arlington. Third, I feel compelled to address the underlying merits of this resolution. I want to state emphatically that opposition to the resolution is not silence. I have family in Israel. Again, like my daughter, fortunately they were not victims of the October 7th attack in a physical way. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood. I have grave concerns about the manner in which Netanyahu is conducting this war. I abhor war. As a college student, I went to DC to protest the unjust Iraq war. Today, with a world on fire, I pray that our leaders have the fortitude to prevent a regional, or God forbid, a world war. That being said, a ceasefire is not a solution that will keep my family in Israel safe. This war will end. It will end when Hamas unconditionally surrenders. Hamas's indiscriminate killing of children, sexual violence, and abduction of civilian hostages means that Hamas cannot remain in power. Hamas kidnapped babies. Its, eradic its eradication is an issue of basic morality. I urge the select board respectfully to oppose this resolution. Thank you very much. Speaker. Hello. My name is Ghulam Alirudha Woolman. I'm a junior at Arlington High School, and I'm here today to speak in favor of the ceasefire resolution. On the 25th of February this year, an active duty U.S. Air Force airman named Aaron Bushnell self immolated in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. And something about him doing that broke me. The ongoing Israeli onslaught of Gaza has already was already terrible upon my soul, as it has been on the souls of so many justice and peace-loving people worldwide. But something about seeing him burned to death crushed me. I fell into a deep, week-long depression. Part of that was knowing that someone who, who was, by all accounts, a beautiful piece of humanity had felt the only thing he could do was die. And another part was this horrible feeling that maybe what he did is the only way that any of this is going to change. Maybe the only way to stop the killing, the bombing, and the settlements is for the young people of this country to burn themselves in the streets because maybe that's the only way that our government will feel the suffering of the Gazan people. And it is our government that needs to feel the suffering. They are the only force in the world that can stop this killing because they are helping to commit it. The Israeli-Palestinian Palestine issue is an American issue. The IDF drops American bombs from American planes, with Ameri all with American support. With all of that known, how can we say anything besides America is bombing Gaza? Our tax dollars go to a slaughter. And, and just like the Trophimidorians of a similarly named Kurt Vonnegut novel, we know all and do nothing. We are the morally repugnant characters, the symbols for a deplorable fatalism. But we don't have to be. We have agency. We can say, no, no, we will not have this killing done in our name. Ironically, all you have to do to join me in saying no is to vote yes. Please do.
Mona Mandel, um, 14 Water Street. Um, I'm requesting that the select board to unanimously pass the special town article five that calls for a ceasefire proclamation. <laughs> I'm a 20 year resident of Arlington, a town meeting member from precinct nine, a diversity task group member, and a mother of an Arlington High student. My precinct is also where we have the Palestinian standouts on a weekly basis. So I'm really here in solidarity. I have a long history to stand against any hate or discrimination in my community. From BLM standouts, to attending the town hall meeting for Rabbi Avi and his family after the arson incidents, APS standouts against hate, um, diversity inclusion groups, and the recent Palestinian solidarity standouts. I deeply care and want to ensure that Arlingtonians feel included, safe, and they belong in this community. Professionally, I work with a humanitarian organization, and this war has caused the highest number of aid worker deaths till, de uh, till date, including some from mine. This ceasefire resolution is very local and relevant to our town. Our annual taxes of 700K gives us a voice to say no to this war. And another thing is also a second reason is also the recent primary vote from Arlington was 11.3% saying no preference as a message to President Biden to work towards a ceasefire. We also have two weekly Mass Avenue standouts visualizing this issue at the heart of our town on a regular basis, and we've seen support grow so much over time. Arlingtonians are part of various groups in town that are actively working on a ceasefire with our local Senate and House of Rep Representatives. There has been precedence of ceasefire resolutions in our neighboring cities and towns. So a complete silence from the select board or a no vote will be a horrifying message to all of your constituents. This resolution also supports an existing town resolution of climate emergency that the town passed in 2021. Most bombs dropped in, um, in Palestine have been more bombs that have been dropped in Ukraine, Syria, or the Second World War. We've had four HRC listening sessions, and so you know that this issue is important. And we feel that this is a balanced resolution with really a start to try to heal us. Does it start, stop here? No, it's a continuum. We have to keep this going. We also have a strong DEI mission to build a community where everyone is heard, respected, and protected. So we want such values to be protected. One of the things you will also hear from a lot of people here is the so much mental health trauma from seeing extremely, extremely violent and horrific images on our devices on a regular basis. And I think this excuse will me, last just for a moment. You're, you're just after asking three, the select board. Excuse me, just one moment. If you could just wrap up. You're about three minutes and 15 seconds, and it's three okay. minutes. Thank last. you. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Sure. I'm, I'm sorry about sure. that. Um, asking the select board to stand up for human rights for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. What I'm going to do, we're going to take another speaker here. We'll try to get through everybody, depending on the time. Just remember, it's three minutes, so I don't know how long we'll get. We have several people on Zoom, and again, what our practice has been, has to, been go, to go back and forth. We haven't taken any Zoom comments yet, I believe. There are, there are several, so we're not going to do it on this one. We're going to hear from this individual here, and then we'll hear from two or three people on Zoom, and then back to the live line. Go, Thank go ahead. You. Thank you. My name is Miriam Stein. I've lived in Arlington for more than 40 years. I've been involved with a variety of diversity issues through the years. Um, I know how hard it is to bring people together who have different perspectives. I was very happy that the Human Rights Commission when it was created, said its focus was on Arlington to bring, have a welcoming approach and bring people together 
if they lived, worked, or even passed through Arlington. This proclamation would do just the opposite, and it concerns me. I appreciate Mr. Helmut saying we should have a hearing that is not on a Jewish holiday. Today is the second day of Passover. I also want, so some people could not come and certainly don't use electronics. I also want to mention that the listening sessions were held on Thursday and I got about a one hour notice for that and I had some other commitment. And the two others were on Friday night and Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. So again, people who observed could not come. There was one on Monday night which I did go to. So I think it's really important that you have another session where people who could not come today for religious reasons would be able to come and speak. The other issue I want to say is if Arlington really wants to comment on international conflicts, we need to have criteria to decide which ones to get involved with and we should not just go by the emotion of the moment. There are a lot of bad things having, happening in Israel and Gaza, but there are terrible things happening in many other places, Sudan, Yemen, Yemen, other places, and we have not chosen to even consider making a statement there. I'm not proposing that we do, but if we really want to go that route, we need to have a committee that comes up with criteria for deciding where we will make statements. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Well, so we're going to go to um, Zoom. If you can promote uh, in, the person who's next. <clears throat> Excuse me, you're muted. Okay. Yeah, if you could provide your name for the record and... Uh, oh, we can't hear you yet. There we go. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, my name is Lauren Kluch. I'm an Arlington resident of 10 years. I'm a public school teacher. I teach English as a second language. Uh, to immigrants and children of immigrants in upper elementary grades. As an educator, I see my role as helping children learn how to think rather than simply what to think. And we spend a lot of time in great engaged in critical debate about things like this issue. I work to encourage nuance and complexity in my students' thinking. And one of the phrases that I use to help them understand how to go about that is two things can be true. That is seemingly opposing facts or perspectives can exist simultaneously. I have heard from some folks that they worry, sorry, I have a two-year-old next to me, um, that they worry that a ceasefire resolution is anti-Semitic. And I want to challenge that framing and explain why it's faulty logic to equate support for a permanent ceasefire with anti-Semitism. I want to remind you of the following with this framework of two things can be true. You can have enormous empathy for the 1,200 Israeli victims of the October 7th attack and reject the notion that the events of that day justify the disproportionate response by Israel that has killed over 30,000 Palestinians, among them 10,000 innocent children. You can want the return of the hostages held by Hamas, while also believing that blocking the delivery of food and medical aid, destroying medical facilities, and targeting humanitarian aid workers is cruel. You can even be a Zionist and believe in Israel's right to exist and still take issue with the idea of relentless violence against Palestinian civilians. My point here is that you can set aside political questions about who has the original claim to the land to speak out against what is undeniably a violation of international human rights. And I believe that is what you must do. To support a ceasefire proclamation is not anti-Semitic. Those who would have you believe that it is are engaging in a logical fallacy. To support a ceasefire is to stand up for hu international human rights and to be on the right side of history. And part of the reason why I live in Arlington and I'm proud to live in Arlington is that I believe that our town is made up of people who want to be on the right side of history. Thank you. Thank you. you put the next person on Zoom, Mr. Miller.
Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you so much. I, I, um, um, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak tonight. My name is Hannah Jolin. I am a mother, a wife, a contributing member of the Arlington community, and a member of the Muslim Ummah. But more than this, I'm human. And long before October 7th, I have watched in disbelief the escalation of violence in both Palestine and Israel. Tonight, I have chosen to stand before you and the broader Arlington community, albeit virtually, to ask that a ceasefire resolution be passed in our town and that the select board endorse Article 5. The ongoing slaughter in Gaza, the forced starvation of children, and the persistent displacement of an entire people must be acknowledged. This goes beyond the narrative of a religious matter. We must focus on the most affected, and that is the loss of human life. In no region should children be traumatized by the sounds of drones and bombs overhead. In no region should women be forced to deliver babies without medical assistance. And in no region should men be made to be terrorists simply for existing. All communities within Arlington, regardless of faith, are reeling from the generational trauma that is playing out on our cell phones at this very moment. We must do everything in our power to believe, to make it known that the town of Arlington truly believes that every human life has value and that we will not sit with our privilege and ignore that we are complicit in this global catastrophe. I stand before you as a member of this community and ask that in the midst of this devastation, we pave the way alongside many neighboring towns and approve a ceasefire resolution. This humanitarian crisis has proven to affect a wide range of residents of different ethnicities, faiths, and identities. I believe truly that this is a watershed moment for our community. This is the time for Arlington to take back its agency and live up to its values. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna come back to the room and then we'll, in, it's 7.29 now, we started roughly at seven for this, um, discussion and it may have been a couple of minutes after. We have to go to town meeting. We have to give up the ACMI recording because there's only one stream in town. Unfortunately, that's the predicament we find ourselves in for a special town meeting warrant article hearing. So we're going to go at 729. I'm going to go to 736 for this. For people we don't get to, depending on what the members do, if we come back for another session, anybody in line, we will take a name. They will be first for the next session, if that's the way the board goes. That's, the, that's all I can do in the limited time. Sir, um, you have the floor. Go My ahead. name is Eldar Giladi. I'm an 18-year resident of Arlington. I'm Jewish, Israeli, and the son of a Holocaust survivor. My father survived Auschwitz, and uh, he came to Israel, where he thought he would have a peaceful life. Now, I think uh, uh, I mainly want to put perspective on what's happening now in the war of Israel against Hamas not against the Palestinian people, not against Palestine. This is a war between Israel and the terrorist organization Hamas. And to put perspective on that, I think it's worth reflecting on the aftermath of 9-11. Following that tragic event, the United States launched a comprehensive campaign against Al-Qaeda. Now, there were Afghan casualties, but nobody went and said, no, stop hitting Al-Qaeda. No, don't go after Osama bin Laden, everybody understood that this group is immoral and should be eradicated. And this is what Israel is trying to do now to eradicate Hamas, which is an immoral group. Indeed, on October 7, Israel faced a brutal attack from that group, resulting in the senseless loss of 1,500 lives, including women, women, children, elderly, babies, in a horrifying, indiscriminate matter. They were mostly civilians. Women were subjected to sexual violence during that attack. Consequently, Israel rightfully responded with justified offensive against Hamas to, el to eliminate that terrorist threat, much like how the US responded to Al Qaeda. So advocating for a ceasefire, okay, is in fact, unfortunately, it aligns with Hamas. It's basically saying, stop going after Hamas. Hamas will survive this round. Hamas will continue to be a threat to Israel. Hamas will continue bombing the Israeli population with rockets, which is what it has been do doing for many, many years. So 
this uh, request of uh, this uh, resolution for a ceasefire is in fact <coughs> inadvertently and, 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 and indirectly supporting Hamas. And this is why I object to this resolution. Have that, the next speaker, please. Um, I just want to say thank you for being given the privilege to uh, talk here tonight. And um, I just want to start with, I too am a junior from Arlington High School. And um, I prepared a speech for tonight. I revised over it. I thought over what words I should use, whether I should strengthen my vocabulary. But in the end, what really matters is the emotion. So when I speak tonight, I'm going to be putting aside my well-thought-out speech and speaking only from the heart. Throughout my life, I have been um, an observer of many of these atrocities that have been going on in our modern age. I have seen them. I have, you know, taken them in um, and really just observed all these atrocities that are happening. And, you know, I can say that I could move on with my life. I could look at what was happening in one place, look at the atrocities that are happening, and move on, because it didn't affect me in the end. But this was not the case with Palestine and the Israel conflict. When I first, on the October 7th attack, when I saw the news and I saw the 14 or 100 so people that were killed, you know, I was jarred for the Israeli side at first. Because I see these innocent people that are being massacred. And this was the case over the next few weeks. I would, you know, be so um, complacent and, not complacent, but I would feel for the Israeli people and the Israeli families who lost their, their families in that massacre. And over time, over the course of the month of October, slowly I would start to realize that this is not just a conflict of Hamas. This is a conflict of Israel as well. Because in the end, Israel has also killed people. Israel has killed 30 times as many people as Hamas has. And it has been doing that since 1948. I'm not asking you to disavow or say that Hamas didn't kill any of these people or try to um, say that those people's lives didn't matter. What I'm saying is that what we need to do is we need to understand that all lives matter. And by saying that all lives matter, we're unequivocally voting for a ceasefire. Because in the end, it is both Hamas or Palestine and Israel, Palestinian lives and Israeli lives that will be benefited from a ceasefire. So I urge you to um, vote yes for a ceasefire. Thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and I'm going over, we're gonna take one more Zoom and one more in person, and then we will take names for people that we don't get to. We just, it, it, it just can't go further given the time constraints. And I, mean, I apologize for that, but it's, uh, Mr. Mallet, if we have the, and if you could let me know how many people are, aren't, are waiting, have their hands up this in Zoom. This is the last one. Oh, this is the last one, okay. Are you talking about this day? Is it that sound? They're practicing outside. Yeah, that, that's the Mononymy Minutemen practicing right, right, out in front. Right. Of I thought it was a radiator. Hi. Could join in. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. You can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do people hear me all right? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, thank you for, for taking a couple more people. I appreciate that. I know the feelings are strong and we all want to have our say. Uh, I'm an Arlington resident, I think for about 15 or 16 years, uh, but I previously lived in Israel for 14 years. So I really speak out of an 
intimate knowledge of the situation in Israel and Palestine. You know, when I when I went to Israel, once I became fluent uh, in Hebrew while, while living there uh, and understood how Palestinians were being treated, I became active in the solidarity movement with Palestine. And I joined many, many Israelis fighting for justice. You know, I'm still in touch with, with everyone, with lots of, uh, of folks. And today I, I spoke to my friend Yael, and she said, you know, she was talking about how Netanyahu is not only, you know, destroying Gaza, but bombing here and bombing there and provoking I I Iran. And um, she said that uh, the government is so widely hated. And she said that when they demonstrate, they yell, we all feel like hostages of this government. I was born out of a Holocaust shortly, you know, nine months after my father returned from Europe, uh, where he served as an American GI for a long time during World War II. And now, at 76 years of age, I never expected to be forced to witness the horror, the grotesque situation of this assault on Gazans. You know, the problem is we see it. We know it's happening. It's on TikTok. It's on YouTube. It's on NPR. It's all around us. And it's very, very difficult to live with. This is not how I wanted to live my retirement, to be in my dotage. But I have to speak out. One of the reasons I've lived in Arlington so long is because of its culture of dig dignity, equity, justice, and cooperation. And I would wish the same for the Palestinians. Friends in other places around Boston envy the spirit that Arlingtonians have shown uh, with our persistent twice weekly standouts and our desire to call for a complete and lasting ceasefire. I hope that the select board will support the adoption of this humane resolution. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I, be, before you go, I, I didn't ask you if you could just provide your name for the record. I, I... Sue Katz, K-A-T-Z. Thank, thank you very much, Ms. Katz. Okay, and so we'll have one more speaker, at 739, and this will be it, as I said. We'll take the names of the people who are in line here um, if, if we do uh, table this. So uh, go you. right ahead. Uh, thank you. I know you're you're very close to time. Um, my name is Laura Handler. I'm a 15-year Arlington resident, a Jewish woman, a leader in the DEI inclusion space, and a parent. I'm here today to voice my concern for the statement. I do like the suggestion of additional time to hear additional community perspectives, um, but I stand here in opposition of the current statement. My personal concern and opposition is due to several factors. None of those are because I'm for human rights violations, which are atrocious, or because I'm for war at all. The first is because of the wording of the statement. I do appreciate that the statement itself is more balanced than many others, and I really appreciate that, Shadi. You know I do. Um, however, for me, the words aren't enough to be balanced, to capture the breadth and nuance of the situation. It's asking for ceasefire without acknowledging or condemning Hamas's violation of a ceasefire on October 7th, where it brutally murdered weaponized rape and sexual violence and kidnapped Israelis. The statement also does not contemplate Hamas's track record of rejecting and breaking ceasefire agreements. Without that, which is recommended by both the ADL and Jewish um, community organization, which makes up recommendations for um, organizations and for towns, towns creating ceasefire statements, the statement is in effect placing the onus of this war on Israel and is a call for Israel to capitulate to a terrorist organization that has committed to repeating the October 7th terrorist attacks. That is impossible for Palestinians, for Israelis, and everyone in the region and the world. Second, I do believe the statement will further negatively impact people in Arlington. It's more than Jewish people, but I will speak about my personal experience um, and not guess at others. Jewish people are intertwined with the only Jewish state in the world, Israel. Anti-Semitic anti incidents increased 140% between 2022 and 2023. That's one anti-Semitic incident each hour, and Arlington is not immune. 
You just heard from the chair of the AHRC on that. Anti-Semitism is number one, apparently, again, which is not an award that any marginalized group wishes to receive. I have personally witnessed multiple anti-Semitic anti, anti incidents. I personally witnessed a gas chamber si sign at a protest, an anti-Semitic attack that invokes the horrors Jewish and other people experience during the Holocaust. While sitting with my two-year-old at a town event, we overheard a conversation between two Arlington High School students, with one warning the other of the horrors of having a thing for Jewish girls. Try explaining that to a two-year-old who's so proudly Jewish. And then during the listening sessions on this topic, which I did appreciate, there were many comments that were anti-Semitic. You know, a resident compared Israelis to Nazis. I'm not opposed to criticism of, of Israel, and certainly not Netanyahu or any government, but there are ways to oppose Israel without being anti-Semitic, and that was one of them. All that to say, I don't feel safe here, and a ceasefire statement exacerbates that. I don't believe our town has invested in the groundwork to make statements on foreign affairs. We need a consistent way to do so, otherwise we do run the risk of further marginalizing groups. For issues we don't speak on, we're excluding populations. Why speak out about the situation in Israel and Gaza if we aren't speaking out about the crisis in Haiti, war in Ukraine, tragedy in Sudan, and so many others? Luckily, we have many tragedies we can choose from here. Excuse me, you're at 315, so if you could just I'm gonna, wrap it up. I will wrap it up. I would be heartbroken to see an Arlington engage in an imbalanced approach here. Opposing the statement in Article 5 is not a vote for war or a vote for human rights violations. Opposing the statement is an acknowledgement of actually what many have said, that two things can be true. This is not simple. This is not binary with a good side and a bad side. This is a tragic, complex situation with bad options and worse alternatives. And any statement on this situation requires nuance and additional productive discussion to address the complexity and ensure the safety of people like me and many others in Arlington, which I think are within our values of us as a town. I thank you for thank considering you. that and thinking about more time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. I, I, I'd like to thank everybody tonight for, we had several people speak. We had various viewpoints. I, I respect the fact that the speaker spoke. There was no interruptions. It was a civil discourse and, and a lot for us to think about. So I appreciate that from, from everybody on behalf of the board. Um, I will now, Mr. Helmuth made a statement earlier. I don't know if you'd like to make a, a motion or anybody else would like to. Sure, yeah, I'd like to move to table the uh, Article 5 uh, Warren Article hearing until the next meeting is determined by the chair. Okay. May 6th. Um, oh, it's determined May 6th by the is the next regular meeting. Um, just a question of whether it will, we'll have a meeting before that. May 6th is a Monday. The special town meeting is May, Wednesday, May 8th. Um, and that's the kind of way I, I went with the tabling, which is not to a date certain. We give yeah, the so, so, so what, yeah, and, and, and Mr. Hurd isn't here tonight. What I'd like to do is it will either be next Wednesday or Monday, May 6th. It won't be Monday night. We won't be back Monday night. I would like to check with him for his availability and also just see where we are with town meeting and, and staff. But we, if, if the, there has been a motion in a second, if that does go forward, there will be a call of another meeting. It will be on that agenda, maybe the only item on that agenda. So I, I will definitely second it, and I will say the next Monday, I can, I'll can probably be late for town meeting, so I couldn't, but it sounds okay. like we're not going to have a meeting on that Monday. Yeah, that, which, that next Monday is May 6th, I think, so, so maybe is it? next Wednesday is the 30th oh, okay. well, of April. Gonna... Okay, so okay. we will post that. We have 48 hours that we post meetings. We will do that before that, get word out. Um, so any what? comment on the motion in the second, Mr. Uh, Diggins? I'm fine. If anyone needs more time, I'm fine with giving them more time. You know, but why is next Monday out of the question, the 29th? Well, I, we have just received a lot of materials here. I think you know, we give some time to receive some things, to process some things. Just, and, and so I, I think maybe next Wednesday, where we would still have the following Monday, um, I'm just concerned about Monday being too soon. We're, we're saying we need more time to process things with the number of things that have come into the board over the past 24 hours even and, and just learning with the Human Rights Commission. I, I think we need a little bit of time. And, it, and I know just, there are some things coming up at town meeting Monday night that would also limit our ability to, to hear from people. I'm not going to take questions from the from the audience right now, but that's uh, for, for, from the room. But that's, that's where I am. So we will um, repost that. If there's no more questions from the board, we have a motion to table by Mr. Helmuth that is seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, none opposed, it's unanimous. 
Thank you very much for coming this evening. We will have further information. As I said, anything received after 12 o'clock will be posted. For the people who were in line, if you could come over and give your name to Mr. Mallard, you'll be first next meeting. Thank you very much. And we still have some items left in the meeting, so if you are going to leave, please, please do so quietly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. If, if I could ask everybody if, if, to take the conversation outside, because we still have two more items. They can't hear you because they're talking so much. Yeah. <laughs> if we, we still have a couple more items before 8 o'clock, so any conversations, if you could please take it outside. Okay. Next is item 10, a discussion and potential reconsideration of Warner, Warren Articles 8, 9, and 10. And I'll provide the background on this. These are the Warren Articles that had to do with town meeting start time and end time. The board originally voted a will report for Article 8, a no action for Article 9, because that's the order that they came in on. And then we had a separate vote on Article 10. Since our meeting, the town meeting procedures committee met and they were concerned with the language in Article 8. They are opposed to putting an end time in the bylaw. And so what they asked us to consider is if we would do just the opposite, have for purposes of discussion at town meeting, not necessarily our view on that. Excuse me one second. Could, could someone shut the door, Mr. Mallard? If you could, actually the people talking to Mr. Excuse me, excuse me. Could you take the discussion outside, please? I'm sorry. Okay. So what, Mr. Mallon? Actually, why don't we just go to the other side of that door for the discussion? We can't. We can't complete our business. Yeah. Okay, and so you'll see in your re in the, in the item. Yeah. Actually, if we can, you need that. You need to go outside because we can't hear. We're not going to throw you out. We will take the information on the other side. Okay. So for Article 9, what the, what the Town Meeting Procedures Committee had asked is that we move favorable action so that the only vote before Town Meeting is whether there's a 7.30 start time or an 8 o'clock start time. And the moderator explained to me if we did no action, it would require additional votes. And he thought that that might be the most efficient way to do it. So if the board is, we would need to reconsider our votes and then vote on that. But I, I uh, turn to, to the members on that. Uh, I mean, I'm fine. Look, I, I just didn't fully understand what you said. But I get the gist of it, and I'm fine with, with, um, with supporting it. You know, And I guess I would ex ask for a re-explanation, but, but we're so low on time. You know, so, so I'm fine with moving ahead with what you suggest. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what the, just, and I'll try to do it briefly. Yeah. What the recommendation is, Article 8 would sought to change the bylaw to our start time at 7.30 and an end time at 10.30. Right, right, right. Article 9 had just a start time yeah, at 7.30. Right, right, right. yeah. The Town Meeting Procedures Committee thought that that was the better one yeah, okay, to address for the board. They were not comfortable with fine. putting an end time. Fine. So what they asked us to do, yeah. again, just for ease of the body, and we're not going to present that. We're going to actually table that tonight. Uh, the moderator, I think, is going to ask town meeting members if they would like to move termination at 10.30. Uh, they can go ahead yeah, and do that, right. and so there'll be a little bit of an experience before we do it. Right. So I open it up to board members. Mr. Helmuth. Th thank you, Mr. Chair, and I do have the, the uh, town meeting procedures report in front of me with the recommendations. Um, I would like to move that this, that we reconsider our votes and select board change their vote to no action under Article 8, um, and that we change our vote to Article 9, which you know at the time was, was offered by the proponent as, as the sacrificial no action one, 
but the procedures committee felt like that that was the more useful vehicle for discussion. So uh, I would move that further on Article 9 uh, that we move favorable action, but only to implement a, to suggest implementing a start time of 7.30 p.m. And again, in our vote comment, this is just to facilitate discussion at town meeting um, on the advice of the procedures committee, um, not necessarily representing the board's personal view um, on the start time. Dr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Hamilton. Do I have a second on that? Uh, second, no action on Article 8 and favorable action on Article 9. Right, and just a question for Attorney Cunningham. Do we need to move reconsideration first before we do that? Yes, these need to be separate, Mr. Chair. Okay, and separate votes for each yes. one article? Okay, so if I could have a motion for reconsideration. Second. Okay, a motion has been made by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that is unanimous. And could I have a motion for reconsideration on Article 9? So moved. Second. Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. Motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor of reconsideration on Article 9, say aye. 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 Okay. So now. I move no action on Article 8. Second. Okay. Motion of no action on Article 8 by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> And now for Article 9. Uh, I move favorable action on Article 9, uh, but limited to implementing a start time of 7.30 p.m. for discussion purposes. Okay. Do we have a second? Okay. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Diggins for favorable action to 7.30. And, and I will add a little context to yes, a town meeting on that. Um, motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, that concludes Article 10. Article 11, correspondence received. Move receipt. Second. Okay. Motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Helmut. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, new business. Uh, Mr. Mallet? No. Okay. No new business, Mr. Okay. Chair. Mr. Feeney? No new business. Of course Diggins? not. Of course not. Mr. Mahan? <laughs> No new, business. No, no new business for me either. <laughs> okay, and now we have a special yes. motion. This is mine. Uh, I'd like to um, move to suspend the select board meeting um, and that the select board meeting will reconvene downstairs at town meeting concurrent with their commencement at 8 p.m. That the select board for the annual town meeting will remain in session and that the select board's uh, uh, adjournment of the annual town meeting will be concurrent with the adjournment of the annual town meeting body itself. Thank you. Second. second. Okay. Motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We are done. Thank you very much, everyone, and um, we will see people down at town meeting. Well done. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.